We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. I believe history will look back on four years of this president and all he embraces as an aberrant moment in time. But if we give Donald Trump eight years in the White House, he will forever and fundamentally alter the character of this nation, who we are. And I cannot stand by and watch that happen. The core values of this nation are standing in the world, our very democracy. Everything that has made America, America is at stake. That's why today I'm announcing my candidacy for president of the United States. There you got Joe Biden, and it's a Fox News alert. The former vice president has made it official. 90 minutes ago, he officially entered the 2020 race with this video. He did. He's now the 20th candidate. Look at that. To throw their hat into the ring. The former Veep is expected to attend a fundraiser tonight in Philly and will hold his first campaign event as a candidate on Monday in Pittsburgh. Let's get some insight from a key Democrat, Robert Wolf, former economic advisor to the Obama-Biden administration, founder and CEO of 32 Advisors, and former chair and CEO of UBS Americas. Good morning, sir. Good Great morning. to be here. One of well, President Obama's best friends and a good friend of Joe Biden. Good friend of Joe. For over a decade, I've known him very, very, so very well. So what do you think about the tone of this video? Usually we would see, here's my vision of America. Here's the American flags. Here's what I'm going to do differently than Donald Trump. Instead, it just appears a little bit dark, a little bit negative. Yeah, I would disagree. I thought it was powerful and compassionate. I think that, listen, in this polarizing environment, it's an incredible contrast to the president. The truth is, I think that he's saying we have to bring people together, and this is the, not the right way, and I'm going to show you the right way. And I think it's very powerful, and, and I think there's a reason his polls, the Monmouth poll came out where he was top in the Democratic field. Right. Poll this morning came out where he was plus eight over Trump. I know polls mean nothing at this point, but it's, it, he's really been resonating the last few weeks because he looks like he's the most powerful candidate to go against President Trump. Or, or, or is it just the fact that he's got the best rec uh, name recognition? I mean, you, you look at those 20 faces and you go, yep. well, I know that one and I know that one. But Joe Biden was vice president for, you know, eight years and he's been a U.S. senator for decades. Yeah, I think there's no question early on name recognition matters. We know at this point in 2008 or 2007, Rudy Giuliani was beating Hillary Clinton. And Why Barack Obama became right. president. <laughs> so as the guy that was backing Obama when he was at 1%, I know many things can change. I would say it's a little different. I would say name recognition is actually more important today because when there is a field of 20, you know, you're going to have a lot of people get 10 to 15 percent, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, name recognition on stage it doesn't cost you money to introduce yourself, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a fight for money. Yeah, when we go outside and ask people on the street, do you know who this candidate is? Do you know some of the ones that they see their picture, they say, who is that? And they're running for president, you know. But uh, where is President Obama? Many are wondering why he's not endorsing Joe Biden or hasn't come out and said, this is the guy. Well, former presidents never endorse. Maybe the only one who did was President Bush endorsed his brother. But they just don't endorse. They sit on the sidelines and they wait for the primary to actually take place. They don't like to put their finger on the scale. So it's not a surprise. Well, who do you think he'll vote for? I think he'll vote for whoever's the, the Democratic nominee. primary. <laughs> whoever's the nominee. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I've been with them for over a decade. I mean, their, their love for each other is real. There is mm -hmm. no question that, you know, Michelle and Joe and Jill and, uh, and, and Joe. Are but does all that right. mean he wants him to be president? I think he'd love him to see president. You don't think that uh, President Obama wants Joe or any of the field to beat President Trump? Well, on that point, though, <laughs> would, he, would Barack Obama really want to see Bernie Sanders as president as a socialist? And I ask you to frame it, you know, in a, in a broader context here. How does Joe Biden beat Bernie Sanders in this primary when he's got money, he's got big crowds, and he seems, Bernie, to have real energy? Yeah, there's no question you cannot discount Bernie Sanders. You would say today, until right. Joe Biden announced, he was absolutely the front runner. He had the most money. He has the most grassroots. He's been running for four years. And he has a lane that really no one's matching yet, the populist left. Right. That being said, within the party, we're not sure if he just has the highest floor at 20%. And does he have possibly a ceiling at 30 percent? We don't know. But it's clear that one of the reasons I think the polls for Vice President Biden have gone up is he's viewed as the candidate that can best beat 
both Bernie Sanders and right. President Trump. And I think there's a lot of Democrats that want to see that. You were talking about, you know, one thing uh, Bernie's got is he's got the online support. He's got all these small donors, yeah. which Joe Biden doesn't have, doesn't really have the, uh, the digital footprint that the other candidates do. But you were talking about, uh, you know, what their lane is. Yeah. What's Joe Biden's lane? You know, I think a few things, and I know we hate putting people in lane because it's for the party. Um, he was the number one surrogate, okay, during the midterms and could go to literally every place from, the, from the coasts to the Rust Belt to the South. He is the one person that plays well everywhere. He could go for Connor Lamb and he could go for Andrew Gillum. And so I think that that's really powerful because we lost the blue wall of Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania to President Trump. And now all Trump. those candidates he helped owe him. They owe him back. I think he's going to have an incredible uh, uh, amount of support. The other thing I would say on fundraising, it, small donors are critically important because it gets the grassroots excitement out. 18 million is greater than 12, 12 is greater than 9. All Joe has to do is show he can raise. And I know for a fact, as someone who will give to Joe, I've given to five other candidates. But there's going to be a ton of people that give to Joe because they want to show support. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to have a money issue with Joe Biden. And the other thing I think, Ainsley, to your point, when you have name recognition, you don't have to pay for ads to introduce yourself. That's true. I mean, there's a big difference when we go on stage in June where there's 20 candidates or 22. I think mm -hmm. there's two more that's going <laughs> to enter. And all of a sudden, people know Joe. The, he doesn't have to wait seven minutes introducing himself. So I think that's a big difference. He does have the experience, too. He has the experience, and he has a few gaffes that I saw you guys put out. <laughs> Will that we hurt could, him? <laughs> not at all. Can I tell you something that makes him, you know, regular Joe, right? I mean, everyone has gaffes. We even have gaffes. We just, <laughs> we just, <laughs> we just don't show them. <laughs> well, he, he does appear to be a very likable guy. Yeah. He's got, you know, he's got a great stage presence, and that's what you're talking about. And I think, you know, President Trump really won the union vote. I mean, he was, you know, whether I was supportive or not, which we know where we were, where I was, there's no question industrial America voted for this guy. I actually think today these unions and industrial America, they're going to look at Joe because he is a kitchen table candidate. He's someone that when you talk at the kitchen table about your problems, wages and, and infrastructure and trade, but wages are up, manufacturing jobs have been created. So the, the battle will be, you know, will be joined. And I'm a, I'm a facts guy too, and I can give you facts where people are still hurting. And I can give you facts where things are better. I think in this environment we're gonna see both sides of the equation. I don't think people feel great. And we're gonna, I think there's a, a much better we can do. That doesn't mean it's not better, mm -hmm. okay? I wanna be clear, I'm positive on the economy. I think the president has done a good job in the economy, but I can tell you a lot of things that haven't worked well, like sure. trickle down economics, no disrespect, they're not trickling down. Robert Wolf, we appreciate your insight. Thank we you. always love having you on, especially today, Joe Biden. You know, I, the best I tried to get you guys to tweet his launch video like 10 different ways, but it didn't We've happen. We've been working. Okay, I'm going to keep tweeting. because. Sorry, I haven't been reading I my mean, text messages. I, I yeah. can't believe you don't want to, with your millions of followers, tweet out Joe's launch video. I'm sure we will. We'll get on it. Thank right. you for having Thank me you. on. Thanks. We'll have it on our Facebook page. There you go. All right.